Now that also includes a full XODH drivetrain with... Oh boy. When you think of nuke-proof bikes, I bet the first thing that comes to mind is Sam Hill, the downhill legend. This is the Descent 297. Now there are a full 29 and a full 27 bike in their lineup as well, but this is the mixed wheel configuration. Now it's dedicated to those wheels, but there is some adjustability built into the suspension and the chainstay length. Like the Giga, their super enduro bike, the Descent uses a single pivot linkage driven shock. Now that has four different progression settings built in using two flip chips that are arranged in a concentric configuration. So pretty much any rider should be able to get what they're looking for out of this bike in terms of bottom out and suspension feel. Okay, since we mentioned numbers, let's talk about geometry. There are some standouts about this frame that are worth noting. We chose the large here for our test, which has a reach of 460 millimeters. The head angle sits at 63 degrees and the chain stays are adjustable as mentioned with settings from 435, 440 and all the way out to 445 depending on a more free ride or a race oriented feel. The overall balance of the descent felt perfect for my size and was one of the easiest bikes to get along with right from the beginning. Those first impressions didn't go without a couple quirks though. The first thing I noticed was the mega back sweep on the handlebars and a bit of a soft feel to the suspension. After installing a 500 pound spring and moving to the most linear suspension setting, I felt like the bike had a little bit more balance and stability. Once I found that sweet spot and got a little bit more composure from the suspension, the nuke proof really came alive. In the middle chainstay setting, the bike is a lot of fun. However, I did explore the longest chainstay setting for a more race feel that gave a bit more traction without the back wheel stepping out quite so quickly in some of those loose turns in the Whistler Bike Park. That did kind of change the balance of the bike and I felt like the rear wheel was really trailing and moving independently of the rest of the bike. So I ended up going back to the middle setting where I preferred the balance of the bike the most. And that meant I felt the most comfortable jumping it as well. Now that could be due to the compact nature of the descent. Just by looking at the side profile, everything's placed really low on the bike and that chainstay, especially with the small rear wheel, really help you maneuver that bike around in the air. Through really rough hits or off camber sections of the trail, the nuke proof has a decent suppleness to it and has a more overall neutral feel compared to something like the super supple Canfield Jedi. There really is nothing alarming about the nuke proof doesn't do anything wild in one direction or the other. It's a very composed bike that has a lot of tunability in the frame that should suit plenty of riders. Nukeproof has specced the Descent with a full SRAM build kit, including a RockShox Boxer Ultimate and a Super Deluxe Coil rear shock. That also includes a full XO1DH drivetrain with carbon cranks. One area they did glance over was the brake set. The Code R's don't quite have the same power modulation as the higher end RSC's. Personally, I'd prefer some aluminum cranks and the higher end brakes in that case. I mentioned that Nukeproof also kits out some of the other components on the bike with their own Horizon wheels, which were pretty bomber out there and left us more than impressed. So with some of those ride details out of the way, what are the pros and cons of the overall bike then? I mentioned how adaptable the descent is. Once you choose your wheel size, there's a lot of adjustment here between the shock progression and the chainstay flip chip. Now, going through all those changes, spring rates, progression settings, chainstay lengths, we never had any issues with the hardware, whether that was coming loose or creaking. So I gotta give it up to Nukeproof for building a quality aluminum frame here. The adaptability of the descent caters to a wide variety of riders whether you're free riding or racing, it's a fun, easy, and neutral bike to get along with and was something that we all favored. One of the downside to Nukeproof's descents is the sizing range. Now, an XL only goes up to a 480 mil reach, and that will be really short for riders above 6.1. One other note about the suspension that I didn't quite jive with was its eagerness to move into the travel and even with a 500 pound spring in the linear setting, it seemed a little bit too regressive. And although that made it supple, I'd still like to have it calm down just a little bit off the top of the travel. 
I also noticed a bit of a weird thing when it hit a corner really hard sometimes. To me, it felt like the chain would go really slack and then kick back as the suspension returned to the sag point. That was a bit of an unnerving feeling and didn't happen so often or even in a straight line. It was more so when I'd smash a corner really hard and come back out of it. Okay, so what are our overall feelings of the Nukeproof Descent 297? Aside from a smaller sizing chart and a couple components that could be upgraded in the future, the Descent 297 is a well put together downhill bike with enough adaptability and workmanship built into the frame that should suit most free riders or racers. There you go, that's how we felt about the Nukeproof Descent 297. Keep an eye out for more videos coming from the downhill bike field test.